the correct response to the gospel is repentance and faith. We need to be accurate proclaimers of the great good news that Jesus died for sinners. But like a good doctor, not only can we say, here is your prescription, they give the right dosage. They tell them exactly how to consume the medicine that will heal their ills. So it is with the gospel response. If we tell people the great news about Jesus Christ and then give them the wrong instructions, we really haven't helped them at all. What is the correct appropriation of the good news of the gospel? Repentance and faith. These days, there's a little bit of a debate about what repentance means. There are two words in the Bible that we typically use or go to when we think of the word repentance. One is a worldly sorrow. The other is a godly sorrow. One is metamelamai. It is a, oh, I'm bummed out. I got busted. Metanoia is, oh, I've sinned against my God. No matter what the consequences are, I feel terrible because the worst part of my sin is that I've sinned against God. That is biblical repentance. Godly sorrow leads to repentance. Worldly sorrow leads you to death. Who exhibited worldly sorrow in the Bible? Well, two people. One would be Esau, another fellow named Judas Iscariot. Boo-hoo-hooed over their sins, but they weren't saved. They weren't forgiven because they were merely sorry about the consequences. Biblical repentance is really a gut-wrenching, I've sinned against you and against you only have I sinned and done that which is wicked in your sight. Have mercy on me. There are three, if you will, components to biblical repentance. And I think as we go through these, you're going to go, oh, wow, it's only the law that helps with biblical repentance. Here are the three elements of repentance. Number one is the mind. Metanoia means a change of mind. So an individual does need to change his or her mind. I used to think this about God. Now I think that. They do need to acquiesce to the facts about God. They do need a change of mind, but that is not all that biblical repentance is. Number two, it is a change of emotions. Once you hear about your sinfulness, how you deserve the wrath of God, but that Jesus stood in front of the wrath of God for you, if that does not affect or change your emotions, uh, then you're really not understanding the gospel or you're not responding rightly to the gospel. And finally, biblical repentance concerns, and this is the biggie, the will. This is huge. Yes, a person needs to change his mind about Jesus. Yes, a person's emotion should be affected, but it's ultimately the will that needs to go before God will save anyone. Remember, God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. And until somebody's will is broken, when somebody is finally willing to say, I don't care what I have to leave behind. I want you. I don't want my own ways. I want yours. I don't want to keep doing my thing. I want to obey your thing. God will not save. God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And a man or woman must repent with a change of mind, a change of emotions, and a change of will. Now, there are some people, and I understand this because there's been a different understanding of repentance taught for almost a century now in evangelical Christianity. They would say either, well, that's a work, repent, you're, you're, that's, that's not grace, that's a work. Or they would say a man or woman, uh, they, they just can't do that. I understand. I really do. So let me share with you three scenarios that I think will bring to light that repentance is something an individual can do because it's a gift from God and that it is not a work. Here we go. Scenario number one, a man has an affair. Oh, there's more to the story. Imagine this. A man has an affair 
and he is busted and he feels really bad and he returns to his wife and he falls to his knees and he says, honey, I'm sorry, have mercy on me. Please take me back. But if you kick me out of the house, I understand because I've been wicked and awful. Please, honey, I want to be reconciled to you. But I understand if you don't want to, because I'm just a dirty dog. Now, would anybody see that and go, you know, that fellow sure did deserve to be forgiven by his wife. He sure did earn that. No, you wouldn't think that. Repentance, just because it's something that we do, doesn't mean that it's a work. Now, again, it is provided by God, but it's simply a right response to a conviction of sin and an understanding of the gospel of grace. Repentance is not a work. Scenario number two. A man has a heart attack. Poor guy. There he lies in the street. Apparently not a lot of traffic. And he realizes that he's soon to breathe his last. He reaches into his pocket because, well, he was wearing a suit and tie, and he takes out his cell phone and he dials 911. Help! Help! I'm Apparently he's got a lot of wind for a guy having a heart attack. I'm having a heart attack. He calls 911, 911 responds, comes to his rescue, puts the paddles on him and saves his life. Would anybody see that scenario and say, yep, he sure did save himself. He called 911 and he saved himself. No, that's just, that's just silly. He didn't save himself. He called out for help. The paramedics saved him. The same thing is true with biblical repentance. We call out to God for mercy and he responds. He saves. It's not a work. Scenario number three. A man loves chocolate. Oh, he's downright addicted, especially those truffle thingies. Oh, does he love them? And you might be inclined to think there's no way he can ever turn his back on chocolate. Oh, yes, there is a way. If I try to persuade the fella, hey, chocolate, uh, it's bad for your acne. Uh, it, it drives up your sh blood sugar level and it makes you have highs and emotional lows. He might, he might be able to repent of his chocolate for a little while. But if I said to him, sir, we've taken a little blood test and we've concluded if you eat any more truffles, you're going to die. Do you think he can repent and give up his chocolate? I do too. Same thing is true with sin. When somebody understands the consequence of sin is death, they, because it's a gift of God, can turn from their sins, not in perfection, but in a new direction. Please note, we're not talking about sinless perfectionism. We're not talking about Christians who never sin. That's impossible while we're on this side of the veil. Christians still sin, but they don't love it. They don't plan it. They don't plot it. They don't strategize it and carry it out with little or no remorse and then repeat the cycle over and over again. That's worldly sorrow at best that leads to death. The Christian still sins, but doesn't like it. Wars against it. Remember, sanctification. It's not about perfection. It is about direction. Is repentance a work? No. Can a man or woman repent enabled by God? Absolutely yes.